Good evening, fam. My name is Latoya Lane, and thank you for tuning in to the Rewind at 6 p.m. On behalf of our pastor, Dr. Milton Ebert Jr., and the fragrance of the house, Lady Angela Wren, we welcome you to the Rewind. Family, if you would, just take this time right now to like and share the video. That's right. We don't want you to build alone. We want this message to save souls, and we need you to help us do that. So again, please don't build alone. Text, tag, like, and share the video, and enjoy the message. We pray that it not only charges you, but that it challenges you, and more importantly, it inspires you to change. Let's build. I'm 
gotta go back and forth with this, this technology stuff. Hey man, I know when he first came, he had this little, he had this little thing right here. He had this right here. So I said, okay, that's, that's pretty nice. So get what I did. I wanted, got me one. I said, I'm gonna give me one. Then I come up here last Sunday. I said, oh, he the upgrade. He got a big one sitting over there. And uh, <laughs> I said, he the upgrade. I said, he got a big one sitting over there in the corner. And I said, okay, then Amazon, here I come. Amen. <laughs> Amen, amen, amen. Listen, I'm just grateful to be in the house of the Lord this morning. How many know I don't take it lightly um, to, to be able to give before God's people? Amen, amen. I take it very seriously uh, when, I'm, when I'm asked to get up and speak. How many know I'm grateful um, that God chose me on this morning to bring the word? I thank God for Pastor and the First Lady um, for trusting me with the word. Amen. 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 How many know we in summer breeze? Amen. I know sometimes I can be a little windy. Sometimes. And uh, I know as long as I got her lady sitting right in front of me, she's going to let me know what time it is. Amen. Amen. So I did my best, y'all. Listen, I did my best not to hold us here for a long time. Amen. Amen. We're going to be coming from 1 Samuel 17. Starting with the fourth verse, we'll be 4 through 11. That's 1 Samuel 17, 4 through 11. And then we're going to jump down to 45. And then we're going to read from 45 through 51. I'm going to be reading from the NIV version. Amen. 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 Again, it's 1 Samuel 17. It should be on the screen. Amen. I said some of the stuff ended up late, so I thank God Pastor was able to get it up on the screen. Amen. Amen. Again, we're going to read. Verse 4, a champion named Goliath, who was from Gath, came out to the Philistine camp. His height was six cubits and a span. He had a bronze helmet on his head and wore a coat of scale armor of browns, of browns weighing 5,000 shackles. Verse 6. On his legs he wore bronze greaves and bronze javelins and was slung on his, that was slung on his back. His, his, his spear cell was like a wavering rod and his iron point weighed 600 shackles, which was 15 pounds, amen? Goliath stood and shouted to the rank of Israel, why do you come out and line up for battle? I'm not, am I not a Philistine? And are you not the servant of Saul? Choose a man and have him come down to me. If he's able to fight me and kill me, we will become your subjects. But if I overcome him and kill him, you will become our subjects and serve us. Verse 10. Then the Philistines, the Philistines said, This day I defy the armies of Israel. Give me a man and let us fight each other. Tell somebody he's ready to go to war. Ready to go to war. On hearing the Philistine, on hearing the Philistines' words, Saul and all of the Israelite were dismayed and terrified. We'll jump down to verse 45. David said to the Philistines, You come against me. Well, you, you come against me with sword and spear and javelin. But I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty. How many know he had the biggest giant that there is on this side? The God of the armies of Israel, whom we have defied. Verse 46. This day the Lord will deliver you until my hand. Somebody say, David was ready. Amen. 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 This day the Lord will deliver you into my hands, and all and I'll strike you down and cut off your head. This very day I will give you the carcass of the Philistines' army 
to the bird and the wild animals, and the whole world would know that there is a God in Israel. All those gathered, all those gathered here would know that it is not by sword or spear that the Lord saves, for the battle is the Lord, and he will give you, and he will give all of you into his hands. Verse 48. As the Philistines moved closer to attack, to attack him, David went quickly towards the battle line to meet him. Reaching into his bag and taking out a stone, he sunk it and struck the Philistine on the forehead. The stone sank into his forehead and he fell face down on the ground. Verse 50. So David triumphed over the Philistine with a slung and a stone without a sword in his hand and struck down the Philistine and killed him. David ran and stood over him. He took hold of the Philistine sword, Philistine sword and drew it from the shadow. After he killed him, he cut off his head with the sword. When the Philistines saw that their hero was dead, they turned and ran. Amen. Amen. Subject for today. This giant won't defeat me. Wow. Wow. This giant won't defeat me. Amen. That's good. That's good. That's good. Giant. This giant won't defeat me. Actress Tahar Taharja P. Henson was born to a working class family in Washington, D.C. on September the 11th, 1970. When Henson was two years old, her parents divorced. As a teenager, Henson applied to a performance art school but didn't get in. A man, she, she performed to a, a art school but didn't get in. Instead, she attended Oxen Hill High School, graduating in 1988. Henson spent her first year in college studying electrical engineering at North Carolina Agriculture and Technical State University. After failing pre-calculus, she transferred to, to, Hall, to Howard University, where she studied theater. All right. At the same time, Henson was working two jobs, one as a secretary at the Pentagon and another as a cruise ship entertainer. At Howard, she owned her singing, dancing, and acting skills, proudly earning herself a triple threat scholarship. I mean, no, she said, this giant won't defeat me. That's right. That's right. Good. In 1995, she achieved her grade of graduating from Howard University with a degree in theater. In 1996, Henson and her son moved to Los Angeles so she can pursue a professional acting career. She had just $700 in her bank account at the time, $700. But she said, this giant won't defeat me. After two years of auditioning while also working an office job to make her ends meet, Henson landed her first professional acting gig, a recruiting role of the television show, Smart Guy. In 2001, Henson got her big break with a starring role in John Singleton's film, Baby Boy. How many have seen Baby Boy? Yeah. Amen, amen, amen. I was like, y'all been saved all your life now. I know y'all been seen Baby Boy, amen. Her performance led to another major role as sung in the 2004 movie, Hustle and Flow. Watch out now. In addition to acting Hustle and Flow, Henson sung 
You know it's hard out here for a pimp. Wait a minute, I'm gonna leave that. Wait a minute, hold on now. It's not the same in the background. No. Wait a minute. See, song is hard out here for a pimp on the film soundtrack. Amen. That's right. That's right. I'm sure a lot of us have heard that. Yeah. Henson went out to land main parts in smoking aces. Talk to me. Tyler Perry movies like The Family That Prays and I Can Do Bad All By Myself. Yes. She then appeared in the 2012 comedy, Think Like a Man, mm -hmm. and the 2014 thriller, No Good Deeds. And she sang and danced in Dream Girls. In 2015, Henson returned to television with our favorite show, Empire. Amen. <laughs> Now, I know some of y'all know Empire, even though they got a little crazy now, but how many know we, a lot of times, we enjoy to watch Empire, right, man? Yeah. yeah. In the late 2016, Henson stated, started as Kareem G. Johnson in Hidden Figures. How many know that was a good movie, amen? That's right. Amen. As of 2021, the network of Tahara J. Tahara P. P. Henson is worth 20 million dollars. <laughs> 20 million dollars. Take in mind, when she took the faith walk, yeah, yeah. she only had seven hundred dollars right. to her name. That's right. She got, she didn't get a step to the school that she wanted to go. So, she, so instead of her stopping there, guess what she did? She moved on to another school. That's I mean, right. no, she had an attitude that this giant won't That's defeat right. me. That's right. Amen? That's good. That's good. What amazes me is that we are living in a world where people would judge and or downplay you and your potential before they get to know who you are. All right. But on the flip side, be an advantage for you. Because when they look over you or downplay who you are, God will step in and show them the anointing that was placed on your life. And God will show the naysayers that the naysayer just why he anointed you. And sometimes, and I've seen this before, God will remove them out of the equation. That's right. That's right. That's right. Which brings me to your kingdom nugget. You messed up when you thought you were better than me because you were bigger than me. That's good. That's good. Let me say that one more time. That's good. You messed up when you thought you were better than me because you were bigger than me. Just because I didn't have a college degree. You feel like I don't deserve this world with all this promotion. You thought, because I didn't stay where you stayed, or I grew up where you grew up, that I don't deserve to drive what I drive. All right. But how many know that God will step in and show them just who he is and what God that we serve? That's Amen? Right. That's right. When we face, when we are faced with adversity, we have to keep pushing and trust the process. Let me say that one more time. When we are faced with adversity, we have to keep pushing and trust the process. But I'm here to tell you, the process isn't always easy. The process isn't always easy and it can be uncomfortable, amen? God will allow us to get out of our comfort zone and to get in some unfamiliar places That's where right. we are uncomfortable so he can get the glory out of our lives. That's right. How many know God will step in and show out? Now he may not come when we want him to come, but I always believe that God is our always, he's, uh, uh, he's always on time God, amen? Always, always. Sometimes we may have to wait. 
And that's where the talent can come in, waiting. Waiting, waiting is where the talent can come in. But I know that God is always on time, amen? What I know about God is that sometimes he will allow us to go through some disappointments. He will allow us to get looked over. And he will allow us to get denied. That's right. To see if we will continue to remain humble and trust him. How many know that it ain't, it won't always come to you easy? Because I believe that when God takes us to a certain level, that he needs to know that once we get to the level that he that we're asking and praying for, mm -hmm. that we won't fold. That's he right. needs to know That's right. that when we get to that place, that he can continue to trust us. Yes. Because I believe that when God blesses us, how many know that it's not just for us? No, sir. God blesses no, sir. us. I put us in positions to be able to bless someone else. That's Amen. Right. We can't be selfish when God blesses us. Right. Just like God give it to us. How many know he can take it away? And I've always heard the saying, I've heard the, the saying that people will say, be careful on your way up to the top. That's right, that's right. Because you might have, you might have used those same people on your way back down to the bottom. That's right. And how many know, I don't, once God elevate me, my plans ain't to fall back down, amen? Yeah, right. So God, whatever it is that you want me to do, that's right. Yeah. Lord God, I pray that you show me, God, you give me the vision. We have to start asking God that. God, what is the vision? What is it that you want me to do uh -huh. so I can do it, amen? Because I don't want God to take away what he has blessed with That's me, right. amen? That's right. Which brings me to principle number one. If the trial is big, the breakthrough will be even bigger. Oh, I like that. I like Let me say that one more time. If the trial is big, and I've been know these All trials right. can be tempted, amen? If the trial is big, the breakthrough will be even bigger. I once had, I once heard somebody say, if you want to know how big your breakthrough will be, uh -huh. look at how big your trial is. Amen. All right. All right. Amen. All right. I believe that once we pass that test, that God will have a bigger breakthrough on the other side. Amen. Come on, Amen. Come on, now. Come on. Like they say, the bigger you are, the harder you will fall, amen. All right. These trials will these trials we go through can sometimes feel like giants. Yes. And it will make us feel like it's no way out. Amen. It will sometimes make us curse God. Why? Why? Why me, Lord? Why must I go through this? Why must I go through this trial? Why is this happening to me? And I believe God is saying to us, why not you? Why not? That's good. Because I honestly believe, and we hear it all the time, that God won't put more on us than we can bear. Now listen, let's be real here today. It seems like we can't bear it. Some trials, some things that we go through seems like there's no way out. That's right. What I found out is we have to not look in the natural, mm -hmm. but we have to see in the spirit realm yes. Yes. so we can know what God is trying to tell us or what God is trying to get out of the, the trial that we're going through. That's right. Because it's always a lesson. Every trial that we have it's always a lesson right. and it's a reason why we're going through the trials right. because God wants to bless us but we have to go through these trials sometimes now sometimes God will just give you stuff okay. and you'll be like you know what this one not nobody but God and I believe that every time we do something it shouldn't be hard when God is in it when we go through something, when something needs to be done, it won't be hard. I know sometimes things are just, what well, people always say, it is just falling your lap. Amen? Amen? Now, David had seven other brothers, and he was the youngest of them. And because he was the youngest, they underestimated him. Oh, man. Let me, I think they hit a nerve right there. Ain't this amazing how when you go to a place or a job 
when they walk in, you ever notice how people look at you? <laughs> people look at you kind of funny. Who is this? And don't go into a place where you're not dressed like everybody else that are in the room. All right. All right. How many know they will look down on you and they will underestimate you because of your look sometimes? But God is bigger than your looks. We have to be careful because we never know who God will use. We never know the anointing that's on yes. each and every person's life. Yes. I've seen God use children. Yes. That's right. We we just don't know. So we can't be so quick to judge because we in a bigger position than someone else. Amen? All right. And first. First Samuel 16, when God sent Samuel to anoint one of Jesse boys, of, as one of Jesse boys the King Israel, Jesse was sure that it was one of his oldest sons who Jesus would have chosen and not David. If you go back and read this 16, Jesse had all his boys come up but not David, amen? amen? He just knew that it was going to be one of his older yeah. kids and not David, amen? Jesse and his other sons automatically counted David out because he was the youngest. They felt like because he tends to the sheep, it was no way that God would have chosen him. How many know they underestimated David, That's amen? Right. That's good. They thought they was better than him because they was bigger than him and older than him. Amen? Yeah, that's good. Isn't that just how some people are? Some folks feel like just because you didn't grow up in the suburbs or because you didn't have the college education, you're not as good as them. All right, all right. They feel as if you're not smart as them or not as anointed as them. Amen? Amen. Which brings me to principle number two. Right. Just because you grew up with a silver spoon All right. don't mean God won't bless me with one. Yes, sir. Oh, right, let me say that one more time. Just because you grew up with right. a silver spoon don't mean God won't bless me with one. All right. Just because you ride around in a Mercedes Benz don't mean God won't bless me with one. That's good. Come on. Let me say that one more. Just because you ride around in the BMW, yes, sir. don't mean God won't bless me with one. Make it plain. Just because you ride around in the Bugatti, yeah. don't mean God won't bless me with one. Just because you stay in a big house, don't mean God won't bless That's me with right. one. That's right. All right. Don't mean it doesn't mean what you had then that God won't bless me with one. Uh -huh. Because guess what we serve. We serve the same God that blessed you. And if he did it for you, how many know that he'll do it for me? Amen? What some of these bougie and stuck up folks need to realize is that God will use folks straight out the gutter. Yes, he will. Who don't have no education. Who didn't grow up with wealth and anoint them to do his work and change the lives in the world. Yes, he will. Yes, he we will. don't know who God can, will use. Amen. We don't know who God will use, amen? Right. It doesn't matter where you grew up at. It don't matter what side, what side of town you from. It don't matter what state you from. God will use you uh, wherever you are and whomever he chooses to use, amen? That's right. Yes. God looks at the heart and not the outward appearance. The Bible says that Goliath's height was six cubits yes. and a span. All right. All right. Now I did some research on this. Some ancient, some ancient text said that it equal to about 7.8 feet. While others claim that Goliath's tower about 11 feet and 35 inches. Amen? Now, how many know this is pretty tall? It's pretty big. Now, 
I'm 6'3", 6'4", amen? So just imagine, I might have to look up to him. Yeah. And there ain't too many people that I have to look up to, amen? First Samuel 17 and 33 says, you are not able to go against, you are not able to go against the Philistines and fight. You are only a young man yes. and has been a warrior from his youth. Which let me know that David was still a young teenager. Uh -huh. See, back in those days when they went to war, there weren't any teenagers or kids involved. Usually, they're grown people. Um, they're of age where they're considered to be grown. During those times, they didn't have kids or teenagers fighting as a warrior, amen? Okay. Now, there are any proven claims to the exact age of David when he fought Goliath, but some researchers said he might have been around 15 years or younger. Now the Bible says whenever the Israelites saw Goliath, Goliath they all fled from him in great fear. They all fled in great fear, amen? Now David wasn't scared of Goliath. This wasn't, this wasn't David's first rodeo. No one was willing to fight Goliath, but David volunteered himself to go and fight. How many know they didn't have to make him? He volunteered himself to go and fight, amen? In verse 34, David said to Saul, your servant has been keeping his father's sheep. When a lion or a bear came and carried off his sheep, now this David talking, when a lion or a bear came and carried off a sheep from the flock, David said, I went after it. I struck it and rescued the sheep from his mouth. I don't know David been doing it. David I ain't new to the game. I'm true to the game. I'm yeah. true to this. <laughs> Amen. Amen. When he turned on me, this is David's talking. Uh -huh. I seized it by his hair. Now, I don't know about that, David. Now, you're a bad man. You're a bad man. Now, David said he wasn't scared. Amen. Yeah. He said, I seized it by his hair, struck it, and killed it. Yeah. Your servant has killed both the lion and and the bear. Wait a minute, he ain't killed just one. He killed the lion and the bear, amen? That's a bad man. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. This uncircumcised Philistines will be like one of them. Now see, not David, now see David, I think David, the spirit of pride got on David now. Now I believe the spirit of pride, now he talking bold right now, y'all. He talking real bold right now. This uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them. Because he has defined the armies of the living God. Amen? Uh -huh. David had an attitude that this giant won't defeat me. Yes, yes. We need to have the same attitude as David. Even though I'm facing this giant, mm -hmm. this giant won't defeat me. That's right. If God be for me, then who should be against me, amen? Amen, hey man, let me, let me borrow you right quick, um, Elder Freeman, let me borrow you right quick. Let, let me demonstrate something on, with y'all real quick. All right. Now, if you look at Ezekiel Kyle Freeman. Don't size me up now. Come stand up, come stand up for me for a second. Listen, if you look at Ezekiel, Ezekiel Kyle, he's a little man, right? He's little. Now, he didn't speak, and what I mean by that is, he's not as big as me. All right, all now, to right, some right, people, right, right, if I stand up in front of him, he might be afraid. Now, I'm sure he ain't afraid of me, uh -huh. but if you look, <laughs> but if you look exactly as uh, exactly pastor, he's slim. No, he, he been, I see he's been living ways a little bit, amen. But how many know, if you look at his size, amen, imagine how to fight somebody as bigger as me or taller than me, yeah. which means that he will be looking up to me, uh -huh. all right? Some people would get afraid uh -huh. 
because of my size. All right. But not David. David yeah. said that he will be just like the lion and the bear. But see, this is what I believe. Even though the giant, y'all, may be standing over us like this, uh -huh. when we trust God, now I need y'all to follow me. Uh -huh. When we trust God, how many know this big giant? Yeah. We'll start looking just like this. All right, all right. Yeah, you might be bigger than me. Yeah. Oh, but because I trust God, that big giant gonna look like a little man, amen? Yeah. Because I trust you, yeah. that big giant ain't a big giant no more, amen? Yeah. Because I trust you, it don't look as big to me no more. And I believe that all we have to do is trust God. In the midst of the giant, as big as the giant may be, if we trust God, all we have to do is remember that the God we serve is bigger than the giant that we face. Yeah, my light bill might be due, yeah. but I trust God. Yeah, I may not know how to pay my next rent, but I trust God. I may not know how I'm going to eat, but I trust God. This giant won't defeat me. This giant won't defeat me. These giants out are called us to look up. Lord, I don't know how to face this. This is a big giant. But when you trust God, why? when we trust God, how many know that giant won't look big no more? I can't tell y'all how many things that me and my wife, my family didn't been through. And because we trust God, how many know God has brought us out? God has brought us out because we trust God. I'm going to tell you something. God gave me something on last Sunday. All right, I'm going to be giving preaching more. You can don't sit down. I, I got it. I appreciate it. I, I got it in a second, I was thinking. Uh, yeah, I thought I had to go. I had to pass on the mic in a minute. He just sit down. Yeah. Listen. On last Sunday, and it, it's funny because when 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 you're a pastor, you have to know your 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 flaw. Uh, he reached out to me because he noticed something. Um, on last Sunday. I was battling, I had been battling spiritually for the last couple of weeks. Right. Um, and when I was here last Sunday, I went to looking around, I'm like, wait a minute, anybody paying me no attention? You know, the, the finance team and Ed, I was doing their thing, and I looked around at Pastor and, and um, Sister Matt, dude, they were sitting there having that little private meeting, and I'm looking around, I said, well, get on out of here, man, I'm don't need me, give me the so I just left. All right? I just live. And last Sunday, God said something to me. That's before this happened. And it was, man, praise was so heavy last Sunday. And God spoke to me just as clearly. And he said something very simple to me. That praise will stop the hand of the enemy. Yes, it will. Praise will stop the hand of the enemy. Yes, and I have been battling, just been battling a lot of stuff going on. Me and my wife, we had been doing good, and then all of a sudden we had a couple of disagreements. Now, we don't call them arguments. I can tell you, I don't, we just say we had some disagreements, amen? Now, she's gonna probably get me later on, because she said, I already had them a mess, but well, baby, you, well, you, 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 you're part of my life, so this is what it is. <laughs> so, the enemy just been attacking and attacking and attacking and attacking. Even with this message, I had a text, probably that's the time I don't know what's going on. I'm struggling, I'm struggling with this message. Um, and, God spoke to me just as clearly and said, we are in a spiritual warfare. Yes. Now, me and my wife had been going through some stuff around our son, Jaden. We went to different um, doctors and, and he was having, uh, he, all of a sudden, he started having seizures out of nowhere. Uh, so, I think I might have been more worried about it than my, than my, my, my wife. My wife even said, he said, baby, you kind of, I kind of got a little frustrated because Jaden, I always know that he, was a special child because he's if you look at he's completely different from the rest of them, right? So I'm, I'm a little more sensitive with him, and I probably let him get away with more than I should. But uh, Pastor Alex, he 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 called me in, and, and uh, a couple of Sundays ago, he, he prayed with him, and he said something so profound. He said after he got through praying, he said he's not sick. See, we praying that God heal him uh -huh. from his sickness. Uh -huh. 
he said he's not sick. Is the enemy attacking him? Now I don't think Ezekiel, uh, or Pastor Adams and, 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 and our Pastor Ad, and Pastor um, Ray have been talking, but he texted Pastor Ray texted us the other day and was in the middle of a prayer and said that God just told me that the reason why the doctors can't find out what is going on with him is because he's under a spiritual attack. A spiritual attack. Now, devil's confirmation. Devil's confirmation. Y'all gotta excuse me because I've been just going through spiritually. But I kept fighting because I didn't know why this was happening to my child. Then, my sister in law called me. And we talk all the time. You met my sister in law, my brother's wife. Um, she had been battling, and she said the same thing. She said, God said, we on the spiritual attack. So, that was a giant yes. to me, y'all. Yes. Yes. That was a giant to me. How many know that because we preach and we teach the word, right, yeah. we go through it first. Yes. That's right, sir. Sir. Everybody that is on the leadership, go through it first. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I'm here to tell y'all, we are in a time where we have to pray and seek God's face yes. like never before. Yes. Because God will confuse your mind. I'm sorry, the devil will confuse your mind, the enemy will confuse your mind, and have you doing it and everything and not even realize yes. what's going on. Yes. And you are, we are in the middle yes. of a spiritual battle. Wow. Yeah. We have to continue to pray for one another. Wow. Continue to lift one another up. How know we can't talk down on people? Yes. We can't underestimate people because we might not be in the same position as them or they might not look as good as us or they might not drive the same thing we drive. We can't look down on people because we don't know what people are going through. That's right. It is our job to pray for one another, amen? That's right, that's right. That was a giant for me, y'all. I've never, out of everything, I mean, I'm quiet. I'm quiet, and, and I can take a lot. I, 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 I'm, I can deal with a lot. But these last couple of weeks, I have been battling spiritually. But I thank God, and I, and I, and I almost told Pat, I promise y'all, I almost told Pat, like, Pat, no, I don't know if I'm baby get up there. But Pastor would tell you, it's not too many times that I would tell him no. It's not too many times, because what I realize is that the enemy would, would use any and everything yeah. to get you off your game. If he can put, if he can make your child sick, yeah. so you won't have to preach the word, then guess what he'll do? He'll put, he'll put a sickness over that child yes. just so we can get to you. Yes. We have to make sure that we're in the spirit realm, that we're praying. Yes. Yes. Because yes. the enemy yes. is, now, let me tell y'all something, the enemy is doing his job. Yes. He's doing his job. Yes, he, is. Yes, he, is. he don't take no days off. He don't go on vacation. The enemy is doing in his job. And he started right here with the church. Yes, because is. we are the one that is spreading the gospel oh, that's right. about Jesus the Christ. And if he can tear down the church, which I believe is the strong man, the yes. church is the strong man. Yes. The enemy is the start with the strong man first. If he can tear down the church and the ministers and everybody that is in leadership to stop him from spreading the gospel about Jesus the Christ, how many know he had won? Yeah. And let me tell y'all something. I done been through too much. I know some of y'all have been through a lot. We have come too far yes, sir. Yes, to sir. give up now. Yes, sir. We have come too far to give up now. We've come too far to give up yes, now. We've yes. come too far, y'all, to give up now. This giant won't defeat us. This giant won't defeat us. 
Now, to anybody here today, anybody here, anybody who's been facing a giant, when you're at the point, you don't know what to do. You're frustrated. You're tired. Every time you look around, there's something going on. If there's anybody here that's going through and need prayer, the altar is open. This giant won't defeat us, y'all. This giant will not defeat us. We will stand together. We're going to stand as a church, as a family. And we're going to keep each other lifted up. And we're going to pray for each other. We won't give up on each other. We won't talk about each other. We will continue to pray for each other. This giant won't defeat us. If there's anybody today that needs prayer, if there's anybody today that needs prayer, the altar is open. Amen. Amen, amen, amen.
bring you some praise on, on today. This giant, y'all, this giant, this giant won't defeat us. Amen. Amen. This giant will not defeat us. Y'all, let's continue to pray. Let's continue to trust the word. Let's continue to trust God. And let's continue to trust the process. Amen. Let's continue to trust the process. Father God, we just thank you right now. God, we just thank you right now, God, for being God. Father God, we will trust you today, God. From here, from this day forward, oh God, we will trust you. Father God, we ask you right now, God, if there's anything that we've done, God, that's not like you, forgive us right now in the name of Jesus. Cleanse our heart, oh God. Renew the right spirit within us in the name of Jesus. And I pray, oh God, for each and every body that is connected to kingdom builders. I pray you continue your blood right now, God. I pray you keep your angels and cap them around about them right now when they want to. And let them know, oh God, that the giant that they're facing won't defeat them right now when the name of Jesus. And God, we will always give you all the glory, all of the honor, and all of the praise. And in your son Jesus in Christ's name, we pray. Wow, what an amazing word. On behalf of our pastor, Dr. Milton E. Wren Jr. and the fragrance of the house, Angela Wren, we pray that this message not only charged you, but that it challenged you and more importantly, inspired you to change. KBB family, before you leave, please take this time now to connect with us. Visit our website at www kingdombuildersbirmingham.com Also like and subscribe to our YouTube page and our Facebook page at Kingdom Builders BM. That's Facebook and YouTube at Kingdom Builders BM. Please like and subscribe. Family, we thank you so much for everything that you do and continue to do. As you know, you can give at any time in the ser during the service. However, if you would like to give now, so, we have four ways to give. We can give the cash app, text to give, text KBMG to 54244, or you can do it through Givelify. And if you don't prefer those, you can also do it the traditional way by mailing it to our PO box. Family, thank you again for joining us for um, e worship today. We want to thank you again for everything that you do, and let's continue to build. Father's heart, not the sky, not chains, but truth is, I'm not lucky, I'm lucky.